I am Chen Yu. I'm Peyton. I'm Lauren. And our drawing is called the polymer, the polymer part, and uh, it's an analogy for our lab called uh, about biopolymers, where we make a gel using polysaccharides and different concentration of calcium ion. So in the picture, we have both kids and adults and both girls and boys that are at a park. And the, some of the kids are on a play structure that you can see in the top left corner. So some of the people are holding hands forming a circle, and some of the people are holding hands forming a line. And some people are standing under the sun and are hot, unhappy, and are not holding hands. And then some of the people are standing under a tree and are cooler and are happy and are holding hands. And in the middle of the playground, you can see kids trying to leave to play on the structure on the top left. And on the bottom left, there's less people than on the playground. So this picture is um, a metaphor for the experiment that we did about biopolymers. So the kids that are shown actually re represent the calcium ions that we use to form the gel, while the adults are iota carrageenan, which are the other part that we use to form the gel. The park is the place of interaction, and when the adults and the kids are holding hands, that represents them forming bonds to form the gel, and it forms the bonds of different lengths to represent the different strengths. So the sun represents the heat that prevents the solidification of the biopolymers, and um, the shade represents the cooling effect, which allows the solidification which is represented by the holding of hands. So on the left side of the wall, there are less people, so less people can able to, are able to make the bonds. And on the right side, on the main playground, there are more kids, which means uh, more calcium ions, and they are able to form more bonds. And they are stronger, and they form quicker. quicker. So the bonds that are represented actually go in a repeating pattern of adult kid, adult kid, et cetera, for however long they are. And this is actually true for the experiment we did where polymers have to be in that and in a very exact repeating pattern for them to pretty much work. So when the kids go, le go to the playground to play, they have to leave their groups and uh, that eventually breaks the bond, which represents how if you put in an enzyme, it can actually degrade it, the gel, from our experiment, and it won't be a gel anymore. It'll go back to being in a liquid state. So what we liked about this illustration was uh, portraying the family as re representing the polymer and portraying the adults as iota carrageen and the kids as the ions that linked the adults together. And what I like about this picture is that kids trying to play on the structure and it makes sense at, in our real life that kids wants to play. Uh, one more thing that we liked is how this is the creativity of um, showing the temperature change, how it can affect the polymers using the sun and the shade. Um, a possible improvement that you could make is um, breaking it into panels to clarify certain important concepts. And another improvement could be make the arrow point to the exact place or from the exact person. So to conclude, our group really appreciates the creativity of the artists to um, create this metaphor to represent the lab that we did on biopolymers. Thank you. Okay, questions? You guys are gonna make me start this one again, right? <laughs> yes! So the, um, the playground, does that, that represent the enzymes? Is that right? The playground just represents, um, it does represent the enzyme of the kids wanting to go there to release the bonds and break the polymer apart. But it says source of ions. So we took the source of ions to represent of like, that's why they're all there. That's the place of interaction. And that's what brings the kids and adults to that one part of 
like the park? E yeah, I think maybe it's actually just, just that. It's the source. So in your experiment, so, so say you just imagine that playgrounds are sort of an infinite source of children and parents aren't actually connected to particular children. They just need any child. <laughs> and they can just go steal one from a playground. How would that be an analogy to the actual experiment in the way you did it? Um, it's like uh, the concentration of the calcium ion, which, is, which are the kids, uh, actually attracts the uh, polysaccharides, which is represented by the adults. So actually, the kids attract the adults to make the bond. So what do you start with in your experiment? Polysaccharides. Polysaccharides. And then what do you add? Kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I think maybe it's just like kids have to come from someplace. Where do kids come from? Playgrounds. <laughs> okay. Other questions? In your experiment, what was, what was the wall that reacted so much with that? Um, that's actually what, a, what we are trying to figure out. And we thought about it and realized like on the left side of the wall, there are less people. And on the right side is the main playground, which has more people. And that may be. We said uh, in our conclusion, basically, we want the uh, creator of this drawing to make more panels so that you can see a separation between important parts. It's not just a wall uh, on the main playground, so that you might thought that's a part of the. Yeah, but but in fact, it, it, uh, we should focus not on artistic choices, but on science analogies, because one can break into panels or one can just make regions of a picture that represent different parts. And they're both, per I, I, we should try to not focus on the sort of artistic choices, only on the limits of the analogy. Like, you know, how is child not a calcium ion? Uh, <laughs> as, uh, as opposed to sort of how you graphically. But so given that we now understand that the wall is separating a region, it's like a panel, and that's a perfectly great way to do it. What would, what is the region on one side of the wall in terms of the science? How is that different from the region on the other side? What were the two things in your real experiment that represented the main part versus the other side of the wall? So on the left side, um, you can see less kids, so they form less bond. And in actual experiment, we, actu uh, we have five different um, flasks, and they all have different a concentration of calcium ions added into it. So on the left side is the less concentrated flask, and the right side is the more concentrated ones. Yeah. Um, so, okay, other questions? Yeah, it represents, uh, actually polysaccharide, uh, polysaccharides are really small sugar uh, monomers uh, linked together. And that usually polysaccharides are many sugars linked together so that their size is really big. But calcium ion is only one atom. So that's a difference in size. So my, so my last question is, any significance to the whole holding hands thing? It, it, I, I think there's a, a one more connection you could make that has to do with the nature of the calcium ions. So it could be the charge because um, calcium ions have a very specific charge. They can only go towards the part of the polysaccharide that, also, that has the opposite charge, so when they attract to that specific point. And what is, what is their charge? Uh, so it's positive for uh, calcium ion and negative for polysaccharides. And do you remember 
what positive charge it is. Positive two. And maybe you could like go one step further with the analogy, because it's plus uh, two. They have two hands. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so this was awesome. This picture, I just want to say, captures so much physics in one picture. Could the author stand up? That, that's a really <laughs> uh, so good job. Excellent job explaining, and also excellent job doing a, a group discussion of the topic and going back and forth. So good job to everybody.